another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use a slider in our app. So basically we're going to be learning how to use this guy right here, which basically lets us slide between different values and pick up on those values and do something. So that something in this case is adjusting the size of this red square you see here. So it's a super nifty component. You see it all across the first party apps from Apple, like in the music app and in other adjustable settings like brightness. So with that being said, uh, I've been saying this in my recent videos. I hope everyone's staying safe and doing well with the global virus issues that have been going on. Um, drop a like down below if you're excited for this video. Sit back, fire up Xcode, and let's get into it. So as per usual, we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application. Let's give this project a name of slider, save it on our desktop, and let's expand our window to give ourselves a little bit more room to work. All right, cool. So let's hop on over to our main.storyboard. And in here, basically, let's uh, first start by setting the background color to black, come up to our library, search for a UI slider, and bring it on in. So let's drop it there, and let's also give it some constraints by coming down here once it's selected. We're gonna say 100, 20, 20, and let's just give it some random height. We'll stick with 52. And let's come up here and select our simulator. I've got this one open already, so we're gonna go with this. Hit Command R to build and run, and we should see our app with a black screen and a slider. Cool, so we got a slider. It slides as expected. Now let's talk about how we can actually get a useful value out of this and have it control something. So similar to a button, a UI slider can be hooked up with an IB action, but rather than touch up inside as the event, we want to basically listen for when the value of the slider changes. And the values generally are set between 0 to 100, with each move being a float point between that. However, you can override that. But the general idea is that the slider is filled 0% to 100%. And you can use that number to calculate whatever mechanism is being controlled with the slider. Uh, and of course, you can change the appearance of it too that we'll, we'll go over in just a second. But let's, uh, let's go to our view controller and let's add in an IB action. And we are going to call it slider uh, did slide. And it's gonna take in a parameter We'll call it sender, which is a UI slider. And in here, we can basically get the value of the slider now. So I believe it is slider.value. Sorry, sender.value. What's a parameter name? Yep, sender.value, which is a float. And for the purposes of just seeing what the number is, let's create a label outlet. And we're just going to assign the label's text to whatever the slider value is. So let's create a UI label, and we're gonna say label.text equals value. Hit Command V, your app should build. Let's go back to our storyboard and add a label. If you run in without adding this label and connecting the outlet, your app is gonna crash because the app is looking for the label, which doesn't exist. So let's drop that in text color to white and let's see let's center this we can bump the font size in a second but let's add some constraints first so let's do 10 10 10 and 10 let's uh, bump this font size over here a couple and let's not forget to connect our action to the slider and this is important, make sure you select the value changed, which is the last one here. And let's connect our label outlet to our label. So let's hit Command R and we'll see what we get. So it'll be up in our simulator. So by default, our label said label, so no value here. But as we start moving this, you can see that this number changes and the maximum is 1.0. 
and the minimum is 0 dotto. So you can treat this, like I mentioned, as a percentage. Uh, so halfway between it, it's about 0 0.5, give or take, because it's really hard to actually get it exactly halfway in the middle, but you get the idea. So let's actually do a little example where moving the slider is going to increase and decrease the size of a image. So let's get rid of this label. Whoops. Let's do command Z to bring back the view. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an image view programmatically and we will adjust its size uh, based on where the slider is moving. And also before we do that, what we can also do is click on the slider and take a look at what properties we get here. So like I mentioned, you can get a default starting value of where the slider's uh, actual position is once the app loads, which is this value. You can also set a minimum and maximum. You can set its color. You can set images. So if you notice in like your music app on your defaults like device, you might have a music or like a volume icon here as in the volume is full and like a little volume indicator crossed out that it's empty. Apple uses the image properties as we just saw here to achieve that. We can also change the uh, colors of all this stuff. So let's change the f this one, this tint, and see what we get. Let's pick a better color. We get this middle thing changing. And yeah, you got a bunch of things over there. So let's add in our programmatic uh, image view. Whoops, let's get our view controller. So let's get rid of this label and let's get rid of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a image view up here. So we're gonna say let image view is an image view. And we are going to use this uh, anonymous closure pattern where we can create an image view and return it. And Actually, I take that back. We're not going to use this pattern, and I'll explain why in a second. We're just going to create an image view like this. The reason we can't use that pattern is we need this to be a var so we can change its frame as the slider changes or moves around. So let's get rid of that commented out code. Come in to your class and override the function view did layout subviews. Super view did layout subview subviews and let's basically say self dot view at subview image view let's also give this guy a background color of red should be nice and obnoxious so we can see it and let's give this a frame which will be a cg rect with an x y within heights the x will just keep zero y zero and for the width and height Let's create another property up here. We're going to say size is a CG float. And let's say this is, um, I don't know, let's say 250. And what we're going to do here is pass in this property for the width and height, like so. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to say image view dot center is view dot center which will center our image view. Um, if you hit Command B, your app should still be building. Now, what we want to do in this function is we want to adjust both the frame and the center. So the frame is going to be this uh, same set of properties, but we're going to update the size right before this. And the size is going to be the size times value. And this might give us an error because these are, one is a CG float and the other one is a float. So we do get an error here. So the size property that we added up here is a CG float and this value is a uh, just a float, not a core graphics float. So we can wrap this in a CG float and your error should go away once you spell float correctly. Let's get rid of that extra T. So now if you hit command B, you should see that your app is building. So let's hit Command R and see what we get. So we got this red square here, and as we move this down, looks like our thing disappeared. 
So let's see what we messed up. So size, we're saying is size times this value. And we are basically updating our width and height with the size afterwards. So let's see, we actually don't even need to do this. Let's get rid of this, put that directly in here. Our value is the value of the slider, which will be zero to 1.0 as we saw. So we're gonna start off at 0.5. So 0.5 of this should be like 125 and that'll decrease the size by half. So it looks like we're not even changing the size. Um, let us see why that is. So we're saying the image view dot frames size, I believe it is because this function gets called multiple times. So let's move this in here. And these are my favorite moments about these videos when things don't actually work because it gives you guys a really good uh, kind of perspective into the reality of building things and how your things will inevitably not work sometimes and how to figure out how to fix it. So here we go. Um, we got this working now. So let me actually explain why it wasn't working when this code was in this function. This uh, function view did layout subviews gets called every time the subview layout changes for the view controller's view. So that includes basically the slider, this image view, etc. So as we update the frame here, we're updating its uh, width and height. So this function gets called again, which resets the width and height as we see here to the default. So we actually want to put the default and view did load because the view only loads once. And we want to get rid of that view to layout uh, subviews function. So let's see that one more time. Let's run. And we start off with the width and height at 250, like we mentioned here. This uh, starts off at 5, or sorry, 0.5. So if we move this, we see the width and height decreased by 50%. If we go all the way up, this is the starting position again. And if we go all the way down, we should see this disappear because the slider value is 0, 0.0 times the size, which will just give a zero. And as we start moving it up, it gets bigger and bigger. And we make sure it stays centered by just assigning the center of the image view to the entire view center every time we adjust it. So there you have it. That is a basic overview of UI sliders. They are super nifty, straightforward to use for the most part, and they add a little bit of intuitiveness to your apps. So if you enjoyed this video, if you haven't done so already, please do hit that like button down below. It helps out the video a lot. Leave a comment if you have any questions. What do you like using sliders for? Have you used them before? Always love hearing from you guys. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you in the next video.